This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by Grafton Apple Festival, Peaceful Assembly Church. Org. As the siege of U.S. embassies continues around the Middle East, conspiracists are asking themselves, is it real? Is it a government-created crisis? Or is it maybe a little bit of both? Whatever it is, it's having some pro-government effect. Any of you who have uh, Facebook pages that include average people and respectable numbers, well, you've probably seen your pages inundated with anti-Muslim vitriol. And you've probably noticed that this vitriol contains a sort of sub-theme. Government, help us. Save us or somebody from this or that. Go to war for us. Blow things up. And make somebody else pay for it if possible. I'm broke. I can't do anything for myself. Constructive. Except whine to Facebook. But the fact is, if something constructive is going to happen in reaction to this crisis, it isn't going <laughs> to... Well, I don't think what the government does in reaction is going to be very constructive. So it kind of falls to each of us to ask ourselves, what are we going to do about it as individuals? And no, in answer to your question, you should not be targeting the nearest Muslim. Actually, it's kind of tricky to know how to respond. But uh, I got some ideas, interestingly enough, from a uh, neocon author, Ralph Peters. He's the guy that... Uh, more or less advocated assassinating Julian Assange, a former army colonel. His uh, near-future sci-fi novels are not as prescient as they could be, not as good as Tom Clancy in that respect, but he is a literary genius. And his book, The War in 2020, does have two scenarios in it that I think may be playing out now, written around... 1990, uh, the book describes a collapsing uh, Soviet Union in 2020. Plays out something like this. One night, Soviet soldiers are sleeping comfortably in their bunks in Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan. The next minute, some of them hop out of their beds and start stabbing the nearest ethnic Russians. It's the ethnic Zeris, Turkmens, uh, Asians. Suddenly the whole Red Army, practically, and uh, ethnic Russians are in full flight in the direction of Moscow. Of course, all of us can uh, sympathize with the idea of bringing down a great empire. It has caused great harm. But uh, in a sensitive twist, Peter's chronicles this humanitarian catastrophe that descends on the Russian people. The Russian civilians can't pull out fast enough. The Russian army weapons can't stand up against Japanese armaments, which flood into the other side. Peters is a literary genius. I don't remember if I mentioned that before, but the book is a real page turner. So anyway, is that kind of what's happening to the Americans uh, in the Middle East now? Uh, will there be a humanitarian catastrophe for them, the ones who are living or stationed there? And to what extent are many of them largely innocent? Will there be a general evacuation of Americans from the Middle East? Can infrastructure handle such a maneuver? If so, how long would it take? And what would be the dimensions of the... Uh, humanitarian situation it would unleash inside New Hampshire. The obvious scenario would be a clogging of New Hampshire airports and seaports, such as they are. There's probably only one of the latter. A demand for aircraft that can carry, uh, carry passengers relatively long distances. It could be a sort of American Dunkirk. Though I'm afraid the Americans aren't the good guys to the extent that British Army was in 1940. The limited extent. 
Don't miss this year's Grafton Apple Festival, Sunday, September 30th. Bring a few apples, hang with New Hampshire Freedom Folk, and crank a vintage cider press. Details are at Peaceful Assembly Church. <laughs>